I am Dr. Ashok Sareen, Senior Consultant Nephrologist at Apollo Hospital. Today I am going to talk about diabetes mellitus and how it affects the kidney. Now diabetes is very common in India and in North India, especially in Delhi and NCR. As a matter of fact, it's very common all over the country. And this is one of the most important diseases which affects the kidney in many ways. The most common condition in men and women is development of urinary tract infection. And we have noticed that once the blood sugars are high, men and women can develop urinary tract infection very quickly and very readily. The other condition which is not very common is papillary necrosis in women where a papilla gets necrosed, a renal papilla gets necrosed and it gets lodged in the ureta. It can mimic a stone and we call it renal papillary necrosis. It can also cause bleeding in the urine and other, other events. Then of course we have a condition known as microalbuminuria which a patient will not be able to appreciate but there are small amounts of protein which are excreted by the kidney which they should not be and if we catch the condition early and treat it adequately then the microalbuminuria is reversible and it will prevent further damage to the kidney. After this we have a condition known as macroalbuminuria where large amounts of protein are excreted via the urine and this results in a fall of the protein concentration within the vascular or the blood compartment and this is, is, known, it is known as general anasarca where there is puffiness of the face, marked swelling of the legs and feet and sometimes the swelling comes on the abdomen as well. Then of course uh, we have renal failure where the serum creatinine and the blood urea start going up gradually and the serum potassium also goes up. Of course I'm going to talk to you about prevention of uh, kidney disease by diabetes and the important thing is that we should the type 1 diabetic who is a lean diabetic or a juvenile diabetic where it starts early in the teens or the young adults where there is no fault of the patient and it's a genetic and hereditary condition where insulin is required there of course the renal failure or the renal damage is not a fault of the patient but the type 2 diabetic who is actually due to the environment where the patient has been eating too much or has been eating the wrong foods, <clears throat> junk food, uh, uh, eating a lot of saturated fats, a lot of sweets and has put on a lot of weight over the years. This is highly avoidable because if this patient eats the right food, low in, satur in, in saturated uh, fats, low in carbohydrate and indulges in regular exercise and makes sure that the weight is down, then of course diabetes is preventable and the blood sugars can be checked. Now it is very important that we, if there is any indication of diabetes or if the person is uh, 40 years or above and if the weight is excessive, we must get a regular fasting and postprandial blood sugar. Now fasting is the blood sugar taken early in the morning when the person has not had anything to eat or drink. And the postprandial is two hours after a meal. The fasting blood sugar in every individual should be around 100 milligrams per cent and a postprandial blood sugar of 140 milligrams per cent. Then the HbA1c which is the glycosylated hemoglobin which gives us an indication of the blood sugars over the, over the last three months should be 6 percent. So if these factors are maintained then the blood sugars are normal. If these sugars, if these results are persistently high this indicates the, that the patient is a diabetic and this person requires treatment. Then of course uh, I have told you the importance of exercise, lifestyle change, weight reduction and eating the right quality foods. Then of course smoking in combination with diabetes is disastrous because this in combination will develop, uh, the patient will develop eye problems, heart disease, kidney disease and of course peripheral vascular disease where the patient can develop gangrene of the toes and this can be a serious condition. Then of course we must uh, do a lipid profile which is a fasting, cholesterol, triglyceride and other lipids so that because in, in a diabetic 
the lipids can go up and this in combination with a high sugar and smoking if the person is smoking can also cause a lot of vascular problems. Of course alcohol should be taken only occasionally and in moderation but a patient who is severely diabetic or moderately diabetic should actually avoid alcohol because alcohol contains large amounts of calories. So if we, uh, pre this is highly preventable as I said except for a juvenile diabetic there of course the juvenile diabetic should also uh, take his or her meals regularly, should have a balanced diet, should indulge in exercise and take the insulin regularly. Whereas an adult diabetic or type 2 diabetics who are obese should take their medi medicines either oral hypoglycemics, oral tablets or insulin regularly to keep their blood sugars normal fasting 100 and PP 140 milligrams percent. If this is done and all the other factors like smoking and alcohol are avoided, exercise is indulged in, then the ill effects of diabetes on the kidneys can be minimized to a great extent. Thank you.